Overhand Knot. To tie an overhand knot, take the two ends of your rope and cross the working end over the standing end. Now turn the working end through the loop and pull both ends to tighten. This simple to tie knot is commonly used as a stopper knot on the end of a rope. Overhand on a bite. To tie an overhand on a bite, form a bite in the section of rope where you want to tie the knot. Cross the bite over the standing strands to form a loop. Pass the bite under the loop and pull it through the loop. Dress the knot by making the strands run parallel and pull each strand tight individually. By doubling over the end of the rope to form a bite, an overhand knot is tied to create a loop. This is easy to tie but can be difficult to untie once loaded. Figure 8. To tie a figure eight, form a bite in the area of the rope where you want your knot. Cross the working end of the rope in front of the standing end and now bring it behind the standing end once. Bring the working end up and through the loop and pull. As you pull tighter, you will see the figure eight shape. Make sure to have at least six inches of tail. You can estimate this with the space between your thumb and pinky finger. The figure eight is similar to an overhand knot, but with one extra turn. The figure eight shape is easily recognizable. This is commonly used as a stopper knot on the end of a rope. Figure eight on a bite. To tie a figure eight on a bite, Form a bite in the section of the rope where you want your knot. Cross that bite over the standing strands to form a loop. Bring the bite under the rope, back over, and through the loop. Dress the knot by making sure all of the strands run parallel and pull each strand tight individually. By doubling over the end of the rope to form a bite, a figure of eight knot is tied to create a loop in the end of a rope. It is important that this knot is only loaded in one direction. Alpine butterfly. To tie the alpine butterfly, begin by wrapping the rope around the hand so that there are three strands in the palm. Take the strand nearest the thumb and move it to the fingertips, lifting it over the top of the other two strands. Take the new strand that is nearest the thumb and move it to the fingertips lifting it over the top of the other two strands. Slide the thumb underneath the strands and take hold of the furthest strand, the one that has just been placed there. Pull the hand out. Remove the hand completely. To dress the knot correctly, pull the ends of the rope apart. This knot creates a loop in the middle of the rope that can be loaded in multiple directions. It can also be used to isolate a damaged section of rope. Clove hitch. To tie a clove hitch, create a loop with the working end on top. Create a second loop, ensuring the working end is again on top. Move the second loop behind the first. Place a carabiner through both loops and dress the hitch by tightening equally from both sides.
This can be used to secure the middle of a rope around objects such as carabiners or fire hoses. As they are prone to slippage, they should not be used on the end of a rope. Munter hitch. To tie the munter hitch, hold the rope in both hands and form a loop by crossing the working end over the standing end. Then form a second loop in the same way. Now, fold the two loops toward each other like you're closing a book. Clip a locking carabiner through both loops. This is a movable hitch that is normally tied around specifically shaped carabiners. HMS or pear shape. The hitch creates friction as it moves over the carabiners and itself. It can be used for controlling the movement of loads. It will reverse automatically so rope can be let in or taken out. Double fisherman's knot. To tie a double fisherman's knot, for clarity, ropes of two different colors have been used. Start with the two ends of the ropes overlapping. Loop one of the rope around the other. Continue to loop the rope around, traveling back on itself. An X should have been formed. Feed the working end of the rope underneath the cross to form the first double fisherman's knot. When correctly tied and dressed, the knot should form a neat cross shape on one side. Now, repeat the process with the other rope. Note that this rope is wrapping around in the opposite direction. Continue to wrap the rope around until another cross has formed. Feed the working end through the cross. At this stage, ensure that two crosses have been formed by the two knots and that they are on the same side. This knot is an excellent and reliable way of joining the ends of two similar sized ropes. It is also the way to join two ends of a line to form a prussic loop. It can be very difficult to untie once loaded. Water knot. The water knot starts with a simple overhand knot. Ensure that the webbing sits flat and is not twisted or kinked. Once you have a cleanly dressed knot, start from the working end of the first webbing and feed the end of the second webbing all the way through the overhand knot. It is very important with this knot to make sure that you have an ample tail, so if you need to readjust while you're tying the knot, make sure to do so. This knot is used for tying together two pieces of similar webbing or joining two ends of the same piece to make a loop. It is very important that this knot is dressed properly to maximize its strength. Make sure the webbing is smooth and make sure you have enough tail on either side of the knot. Figure eight rethreaded. To rethread a figure eight, begin by tying a figure of eight in your rope. Next, take the end of the rope, bring it around the object, 
and before rethreading it, make sure there is enough space in the original figure eight. Now, we will trace the figure eight line through the entire figure eight. Be sure to properly dress the figure eight and pull each strand tight. This knot allows a loop to be made at the end of a rope around an object such as a tree or post when a figure of eight on a bite cannot be tied. It is commonly used in anchor applications.